1765, the British Parliament came up with another tax to put on the colonies to raise revenue to pay off the French and Indian War, and it was called the Stamp Act. And you all are familiar with stamps that have to go on letters to be sent from one place to another. Um, and this is the same idea. These stamps were placed on all legal documents, bills of sale, contracts, wills, newspapers, and cards. And they had to be stuck on the piece of paper or whatever, the legal document, and those stamps cost money. So that was how the government made money. They sold these stamps, and people got ticked off because they had to buy the stamps to do anything, <clears throat> a lot to do all kinds of legal um, activities. So Americans got angry and they started to say this phrase that you're going to be very familiar with, and that phrase is no taxation without representation. That means they believed that they had no voice in Parliament. They had nobody there standing up for them saying these laws that you're passing, these new taxes, they're wrong. And so they began to get organized, and organizing means they started to work together to protest these taxes. And you can see that there are some pictures here of the different stamps um, over here on the left. And then you have some of these uh, places. There are some of these images of how the tax was protested. The, the colonists were saying, we see this tax as death, and we do not support it. <clears throat> so this uh, Stamp Act was another attempt at the English crown to raise money and control the colonies. So after the Stamp Act, the colonists took action. Um, the way that the system worked was that the, all taxes and laws were made by the King of England in Parliament. But only people living in England could elect members to Parliament. And the reason for that is people that lived in other places, like the colonies in America or the colonies in India or the colonies all around the, the world, um, it just took way too long. It was, it was too much of a distance. Travel was too slow for these people to be a part of Parliament. So um, all of these colonists all over the world had to just take it by trust that the king and Parliament were going to do the best thing for these colonies. Um, so the colonists, though, in, in America, they said, hey, we don't have members in Parliament. We don't agree that you're doing the best for us that you can. And so we don't have representation. And we're angry about that. And because of that, these taxes and laws that you're passing are unfair. As Englishmen, our Constitution, our law of the land says that we will have representation. But they didn't. So this saying, no taxation without representation, is, uh, it has become, became the rallying cry for all the colonists. And that's a big problem. The king and parliament saw, the, saw a different way than the colonies did. And this is going to lead to a lot of disagreements. In 1765, <clears throat> before and while the Stamp Act was going on, there was this group called the Stamp Act Congress. And a Congress is a group of people that come together, a group of delegates. And you should know that word, delegates. It's a group of delegates that came together. And um, they came together to discuss the Stamp Act, to figure out how can we get around it, how can we beat it, how can we get rid of it, and how can we survive it. Um, so what they decided to do was to write a petition and send it to the government. And a petition is oftentimes comes in the form of a statement, like we do not agree in the stamp, with the Stamp Act, and then it has uh, signatures of all the people that also agree with that statement. So this Stamp Act Congress wrote a petition that said, Parliament did not have the right to tax the colonies. Only the colonial assemblies had the right. And that's a huge change, and it's, it's, it was very scary to England because that was basically the colonies saying, hey, we have the power to tax. You do not. But the parliament and the king are higher in power. They have more power than the colonies. And so they, you know, that's, that's a serious power, the power to tax. And to take that away from parliament... I, I don't know. I, the king and parliament thought the colonists were crazy. 
So um, you see on the right there, Patrick Henry giving his speech. You should know the end of this, but it hit one of the phrases he says was, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. And he was calling on all the colonists to stand up and say that what the king and parliament are doing is wrong. And because, you know, we're in 1765, for a hundred years before this, from when the, col when the colonies began, uh, England had a hard time governing the colonies and didn't really bother them too much because, again, they're 3,000 miles away, you know, six months round trip. So the Stamp Act Congress sent their petition to Parliament, and Parliament got it, but they didn't listen to it. Now, also in 1765, a very organized group of protests began, and uh, the Sons of Liberty were, were a group of protesters, and mainly stationed in Boston, but their ideas and other offshoots were all through the colonies. And I'm not saying that they're a terrorist organization, uh, but think of today, think of Al-Qaeda, think of um, other groups that, have, you know, they have a goal in mind. Think of maybe, this isn't quite a political party, but um, it's a group of people that has a goal in mind, and they're working together to do it. So the Sons of Liberty, they were unhappy with the way that they were being treated by Parliament and the king. They were unhappy that the king was ignoring their protests, and so they decided that action speaks louder than just words on a piece of paper. So a guy named Samuel Adams, he helped to create the Sons of Liberty to take a more active role against England. They organized boycotts, and boycotting, as you see on the bottom there, is to not buy products from a business as a way of getting what you want. So they said, hey, we're not going to buy these English products. We're going to hurt the English government and the king and parliament where their money is. We're going to take their money away. And um, that was a very good way for the colonists to protest English policies. Also, they used violence like burning tax collectors' homes and tarring and feathering. And that's exactly what it sounds like. Um, tar would be heated up. And you can see on the bottom left, tar is heated up uh, to really hot temperatures, so it's like liquid. And then a, f a feather pillow is broken open, and they toss feathers all over them. So it burns the person, makes them look silly. It's really an awful um, way to be treated. It's a very violent act. And the Sons of Liberty were the more of the violent and active type of colonists who wanted to get the English crown's attention and to make them stop mistreating the colonies. Uh, in 1767, after the Stamp Act was repealed, and repeal means taken away or canceled, after the Stamp Act was repealed, the Navigation, or the, the Townsend Acts were passed, and there were two parts. There, first of all, the Navigation Acts were enforced, and um, we're going to talk about the Navigation Acts in class. And what it is, is it's the rule that the colonies can only trade with Great Britain, no other country. And that goes back to the idea of mercantilism, where the only point of a colony is to make money for the home country. And so the colonists, they had already created their lives here in America. They wanted to do business with other countries to make more money for themselves. But England was still in charge, so they wanted to make money for them. So anyway, Navigation Acts were enforced. That included the use of writs of assistance, which gave British officials the abilities to search homes and boats for smuggled goods. And by 1767, upwards of 80% of all goods that came into the colonies were smuggled. So if you were a ship captain or you owned a ship that shipped goods in and out of the colonies, chances are you are smuggling 80% of your goods. And now the British government gave the power to the military and to customs officers to actually search your ships for smuggled goods. So that's kind of scary. That made, the, um, that made a lot of the colonists upset and nervous, especially those that were shipping goods, that were trading goods. And also there were more taxes added onto the colonists 
load here. So taxes on glass, lead, paper, paint, and tea were added.